America's third parties think 2016 could be their year. And they might be onto something. After all, in this electoral environment, where the major party candidates have seen historically high unfavorability ratings, some voters may turn to alternatives, like the Libertarian Party's Gary Johnson or the Green Party's Jill Stein. But even if the stars all align for these candidates, the chances of a third party breaking through are slim to none. So the question is, why can't third parties take off? So first of all, why are there only two major parties in the US? It's been that way for a long time. According to something called Duverger's Law, in a country with winner-take-all elections, like the United States, two major parties are bound to develop. Here's why. Imagine a hypothetical winner-take-all election in which a range of parties receive part of the vote. Here, Party B wins a seat because it received the most votes, even though the majority of voters cast their ballots for other parties, against the winner. Duverger's Law predicts that voters will see that outcome and behave strategically in subsequent elections, deserting the weakest party for more viable options. Over time, the weaker parties are squeezed out, leaving behind two major parties. So in other words, you're not always voting for the candidate you like or the one that really represents all of your views. You're voting against the candidate you don't like. Beyond voter behavior, there are institutional barriers in the current election system that make it difficult for third-party candidates to get more attention, and thus votes. Presidential debates are hugely important for candidates looking to raise their national profiles. Just look at what Donald Trump has been able to do this year. But the only candidates that typically qualify are Democrats and Republicans. And who sets up the qualifying criteria? A privately operated group called the Commission on Presidential Debates that's controlled by other Republicans and Democrats. Among other rules, the CPD says the parties must get 15% support in multiple polls to qualify. But as the third parties will tell you, it's tough to poll well when you don't have a large base, you don't get a lot of media attention, and sometimes you're not even included in the polls at all. Libertarian nominee Gary Johnson was only just recently included in polls. And the Green Party's Jill Stein was arrested in 2012 for trying to attend a debate she didn't qualify for. There's also the issue of money. Big surprise, right? Democrats and Republicans typically fundraise like crazy to fund things like campaign appearances, advertising, you name it. But third parties don't have the same sophisticated fundraising operations. And just like voters don't want to back a losing candidate, neither do donors. There is federal funding available, but third parties would have had to reach 5% of the vote in the last election in order to qualify for it. Which means even in a year where they could get more support than ever before, they can't do anything about the federal money. All these challenges mean that third parties sometimes define winning differently than Democrats or Republicans do. For them, winning might mean gaining traction in the electorate and giving voice to their party's core principles. Think of third party candidates like Teddy Roosevelt and Ross Perot, who lost their elections but were able to influence the national conversation. Roosevelt with his progressivism, and Perot with his concerns about the national debt. Third parties have dreams of sitting in the Oval Office. Who doesn't? But they'll settle for raising awareness about their candidates and beliefs. They want voters to know that they're even an option. So this year, they'll hope to build just a little bit more support before inevitably running again in 2020.